shakes. This is how we do it at the dock. We've got our filter. We've got our hose. <laughs> and uh, water's pretty clean, so we're filling the tank before we uh, get ready to go. Hey everyone, we're Sailing Sweet Ruka. I'm Kate, this is Curtis, and Roxy the dog. And we're here to sail around the world via Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. We like to take the sea less traveled and are ready for some serious offshore sailing. So come along for the ride and click subscribe. While we were waiting for our new sail to arrive in the port of Santa Cruz, we were asked by the marina to change docks to make room for catamarans that would be showing up from the Grand Large Yachting World Odyssey 500. The move was welcome because our package had been delayed, aka lost in the mail, for quite some time and we were getting antsy. We decided to get a little head start on provisioning for our upcoming long voyage while waiting for the sail to arrive. Little did we know, disaster had struck the neighboring island of La Palma as a volcano erupted covering the hills and towns in ash and lava. This would be our second volcano in two years, not something we are used to from the flatlands of the Midwest back in the United States. It is time to clean volcano dust. It's been about a week since we've washed the boat and we've accumulated a good amount of dust from the La Palma volcano. Let's go check it out and grab our brush and bucket and get to work. So you guys can probably see all this black gunk. Maybe I'll see if I can kind of swipe some here. And that's it. That's from the La Palma volcano. Kind of just been raining down on the boat. Time to get rid of it, keep this puppy clean. It's really not good for the paint and metal, so let's get to work. After a job well done, it was time for some treats, so we headed out on the town to get some food and see some sights. Tell us what we have here, babe. We've got some traditional Spanish paella. So we've got paella de mariscos, which is seafood, and it'd be mussels, squid, and uh, probably some shrimp as well kind of hidden in there. So can't wait to dig in. When in Rome. <laughs> Let's check it out. 
another night was passing by, as we hoped our sail would be making its way soon. And this extra time would allow us to accomplish a few more projects before heading south. Bien dia, senor. <laughs> what? Practicing my Spanish. I'm here long enough. I should be, I should be fluent. We have pipe for you. Uh, you got the pipe. <laughs> Fantastic. Nine mil. Perfect. Thank you, Curtis. You're welcome. Curtis and our new Irish friend, Peter Lawless, headed over to the Chandlery to get some more parts while I edited away to prepare for weeks at sea. Two sailors in a chandlery is like two kids in a candy shop. We are here at the Spinnaker. This is probably the biggest rigging shop on the island. And uh, we've got a new halyard for our new jib. And we also picked up a new tack line uh, because our old tack line is a little bit stretchy. They've got a really good selection over here. And uh, we've got our friends here, and they're about to hook us up with a couple of free t-shirts. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh! Oh, you! You are the UPS? I have... Oh! And we met the UPS man, which is good. Maybe we'll get our packages finally. Hey everyone, today we are putting some new halyards in. This halyard is going to be replacing this halyard. You can see that it is a little bit thinner. This is made out of Dyneema on the core, so its load is fine for it. And it's gonna be able to run through everything a little bit smoother, which I think we'll really like. So uh, this halyard's pretty good. Uh, we'll keep him as a spare, but uh, he has a little bit of shape on the end as well. So I think it's time to uh, put a new halyard on while we're putting a new sail on. How do we get this in the mast to replace this? Well, the first thing that we're gonna do is stitch these two together so we can just directly pull this halyard right through here. Let's get started. This is definitely a stage where we want to take a little bit of extra insurance, make sure we get a few extra stitches in there because it's just really not worth the chance of failure for this to come apart inside of the mast. We've got our last stitches in there and now we've made these two ropes into one continuous rope. Let's lead this through. Uh-oh, we've got a little snag up. I'm gonna have to go fix that. We're almost there. All right, we've got them. Now we can cut this off. Old halyard is out. We want to be extra careful not to let go of this because if we do on accident this will blow in the wind and the weight of the halyard inside of the mast can actually pull this right back on and out and we don't have a stopper in here so we'll do a quick stopper right now just so it can't if it does fly back up there it won't uh, run through the sheave and uh, back down so we'll just tie him off now All right, we've got a little halyard knot on here. So we used to have a Tylaska on the end of our old halyard, but the Tylaskas are about $200 and his splice is still holding up on there. Okay, it's a little shaped, but not too bad. So we've got a really nice splice and a really nice Tylaska in that other halyard. We don't really need it up there right now because we're not doing a lot of head sail changes. If we really need to do a head sail halyard change, 
we can just pull this off right here and this this is what changes our our sails so uh, I think we're just gonna go with a simple halyard knot should be nice and, and give us plenty of room cool time to put the old halyard away we'll keep him as a spare so we'll coil him up here we might give him a soak he's pretty stiff we'll also check him for any shape points or wear that we might not normally see if we can untangle them. When you're old and stiff, you get a little grumpy, clogged up. Before installing the new third reef tack line, we decided to optimize the order of the halyards and reef lines in the clutches. We got the end of this all whipped up. This is going to be our new uh, third reef tack line, third or fourth reef tack line. This way we can put in our biggest reef very quickly from the cockpit. We'll show you something up front that we've done up at the mast to be able to hold this guy in the correct position. we've added a low friction block that is spliced into a loop uh, on the side of our mast right here. And this line is gonna go through here. This is our reef tack line. And then he'll be tied. Well, let's just show you. Two, three, I believe. And what he's gonna do is now tie right on there. And now we can move him up to our fourth reef if we need to. That's now good to go. We can reef from the cockpit. Curtis finally heard from UPS that our package would be arriving the next day and our time in Tenerife would soon be coming to an end. So naturally, we headed out to celebrate. I think we found the best restaurant in all of Tenerife, La Luna. We were just walking around, had no idea, found an open table, and found the absolute best place. Oh, can't even describe how good this stuff is, guys. I'm digging in. See you later. What do you think? Before the new sail could go up, the old number three jib needed to come down. Flaking the sail, or doing the folds that you see here, allow us to make the sail more compact while keeping it in fairly good shape for long-term storage. Once the sail is flaked into a somewhat rectangular shape, we wrap it up in its deck bag so it stays together. Lastly, we can roll it up, adding another bag, and voila, ready to be put away. All right, we're gonna have a seat right here and wait for UPS to tell you what's going on. So we stopped in Tenerife in order to receive our new sail. Our 20-year-old number two Genoa was basically on its way out and we really needed a new one. Evolution Sails came through for us and made us a sweet, sweet sail, which hopefully we will see in a minute. And we've been waiting for this for a while. It has been locked down in New Zealand and uh, finally escaped from lockdown and then has spent several weeks bouncing around different places and being held up in countries due to uh, holidays and UPS mistakes and God only knows what. 
So I got a call today and it is finally supposed to be here. But they told me to be here in 15 minutes. That's when they would be here. And it's now been about 35 minutes. So we're getting a little nervous that that the UPS man uh, might not be showing up. But let's just hope that he's stuck in traffic and uh, he'll be here and we can unbox this puppy and see this gorgeous new sail that we're going to hang on the boat. Fingers crossed. Uh, in another update, we also ordered a pair of Dewberry boots because my boots were kind of on their way out. My gills have lasted a while, but literally they're held together with tape and 5200 not really an acceptable thing to go sail around Cape Horn with. So we ordered some of these boots also about two weeks ago and uh, they were supposed to be here in three days but uh, two weeks later they have since disappeared in Tenerife Customs. So uh, we don't know what happened and uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get those. Uh, let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope we can be 50% on UPS. <laughs> All right, we finally have our package. There goes our UPS man right there. He was wonderful. Adios, amigo. And look what we have here. And guess what? Magically, the Durberry boots appeared. Oh my goodness. I was totally not expecting that. So UPS did pull through in the clutch, bring it all together, and exceed expectations. Because I was definitely not expecting to receive those today, and I was even nervous about the sail. So it looks like it's in good shape after traveling a long, long way. And uh, pretty soon here, we'll get this back to the boat. We'll get her unboxed and uh, see what's going on here. Whew. Thank goodness. Oh my God. Awesome. We're back at the Sweet Ruka. We've got our boxes here, so let's do some unboxing. One more wrap, one more wrap. All right, start winching. All right, good, good there. We get a little on the sheet here. Let's trim them in. going. Not there. I think you're, you're trim.
Our new 130% Genoa was an Evolution Expedition carbon membrane sail with a double taffeta outer layer. We added extra carbon for heavy offshore use and its lightweight design is perfect for performance shorthanded blue water cruising. Choosing a new sail was difficult and we pondered getting a new number 3 jib and code 0 instead of the number 2. But the budget wouldn't allow for that, so we made the decision to get a lightweight carbon Genoa that will keep its shape and help us sail faster, longer. Next week on Sweet Ruka, we do our final preparations and leave the EU for good as we make our way south towards Argentina and eventually Cape Horn. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and many thanks to our awesome patrons for making these videos possible. See you next time!